Good afternoon, Harlem and Harlems of the world. Uh, this is Terry Wisdom, and this is Harlem Network News. Harlem Network News is a new media platform that started at the onset of COVID, and uh, it has been uh, quite a journey. Uh, it has been a year since Harlem Network News uh, started. And we are extremely uh, proud and excited that we have been able to uh, just keep everything going for this entire year. It has been um, a journey. Um, we started at the onset of COVID and uh, the purpose of uh, Harlem Network News has really been to assure that the community is informed. Harlem Network News is the voice and drumbeat of Harlem. Uh, we started and we knew how important it was, but we really understand after uh, this year how important it really is because major, major media often does not really cover um, what is happening um, here in Harlem. So, uh, you know, from Black Lives Matter to, you know, everything else that uh, has been ongoing, uh, it really has just been this extraordinary journey. Uh, COVID, um, you know, the schools, public officials, elections, the insurrection. And you can uh, find Harlem Network News on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Twitter, and we are on Clubhouse as well. And we are doing everything we can to truly um, expand our listening audience because there is a big uh, gap in what I call Black media, um, real and true Black media um, at this time. So we thank you um, very much. And um, we are very grateful um, uh, at this time. So today, um, I'm just going to have to take this call. Yes. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. I'll send him the link. I will send him the link. And if you can call him because I'm live on the air right now. Thank you so much. I'll send him the link. Okay. Bye-bye. Thank you. So uh, that today, um, we were looking to have uh, Cordell Clear, um, who was appointed um, as our candidate uh, for the state Senate. Uh, and uh, she was appointed by county committee. And um, that just happened. It's been about 10 days. Um, she had a press conference and uh, Cordell has an emergency. She is not going to be um, able to join us. Um, however, um, I believe that William Allen, who is also a district leader, um, is going to be able to join us and just update the community on uh, Cordell Clear's candidacy and really what is needed um, for the community. Um, William Allen is a district leader as Cordell Clear um, is a district leader. And um, they were both involved in the process with the county um, committee. Um, the county committee is consists of about 800, and this was the Democratic um, uh, committee. And uh, this uh, convened and different uh, uh, members of the county committee had to vote for who was going to be appointed. Why uh, was there a need for an appointment for the state senator of the 30th district? Uh, the reason was that our very own state senator um, uh, who has now been appointed, Ryan Benjamin, has been appointed to uh, become Lieutenant Governor of New York State with our new uh, governor, Kathy Hochul. So this is very, very important. So what has happened is that uh, Cordell has been appointed, but just so folks are clear, though Cordell has been appointed as the Democratic uh, candidate, 
she is actually um, going to still have to participate in an election uh, coming up in uh, November. And then she will also have to participate uh, in a, in a um, primary in June. So she will be, if elected, which I believe that she has a very good opportunity uh, to become uh, our state senator, but she will have to be elected. And then the period um, from November, and I do need to get clarification, if she's elected in November, um, when will Cordell Clear actually uh, become the acting state senator? Will it be immediately? And that's an excellent question. Or will it be in January? Because currently, because um, Brian Benjamin is not the state senator and he uh, is the lieutenant governor, the 30th district does not currently have a state, state senator, which particularly the 30th uh, the, the 30th uh, district really is comprised of Central Harlem, uh, a part of Hamilton Heights, Washington Heights, East Harlem. So it is um, extremely critical because as all of us know who live within the 30th district that there are many issues on the table. So we do not want to be minus a state senator in Albany um, to address all of the things that we need to address in our community. So that is a question um, that I will definitely uh, be able to pose. And it's one that we should ask. Um, and then we know that um, Cordell Clear, though she's running, the other question is, is there uh, a Republican candidate uh, that, is, that she's going to have to defeat? And then further, the question is, in June, in the primaries, um, will the Democratic uh, 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 Party completely endorse her for the primaries? And are there any other people from working party or anybody else that are gonna come up um, and um, you know challenge her? So this is very, very, um, critical in terms of what is going to happen with our community. Because if we have no one um, in, in Albany voting and you know, making decisions on bills that are coming up, um, that really leaves us hanging. And in a community like Harlem, where we're so rich, we're so vibrant, and where we matter so, um, it's, it's very important that we are um, represented. So that's really what I want to say. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, I do want to um, advise you that this is Harlem Network News and we are a new media platform. And we started uh, at the onset of COVID. You can find us on Facebook, uh, Instagram, as well as uh, Twitter, and we're on Clubhouse. So we're covering all the platforms. Um, good afternoon. Uh, we have just had our district leader, William Allen, join us. William Allen, can you hear me? I can always hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm loud and clear. I'm in the frequency. It's a whole Hey, if you can't hear wisdom, you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you so much for that. I, I love it. Yeah, and that, that's what we're about. That's really who we need to be. Um, William Allen, are you able to actually um, show yourself? Because that would be uh, excellent. Um, I, you... I, unfortunately, I cannot show myself. Okay, okay. So um, for those of you who are listening, um, this is the voice of uh, William Allen. And uh, William Allen is um, our district leader. So if you would just introduce yourself um, and really share uh, with folks um, who you are and, and whose you are, that would be okay. absolutely great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm, the, I'm the Democratic district leader uh, of the 70th Assembly District, uh, which is basically Central Harlem. 
and I'm the co-district leader with Cordell Clear, who is the Democratic nominee for the state Senate. And, and she and I have been working closely together since the early 1990s. Okay, okay, thank you. And just for the uh, edu edification of our audience, um, what is a district leader? How does one become a district leader? If you would just share um, that information because knowledge is power. And I always sure. wanna make sure um, that our community is like completely uh, informed. So well, I, I, you know, I'm also a professor. I always tell my students, you know, if you wanna learn government operation, you should first read the constitution. Okay. Sometimes people uh, are listening to other folks and passing information, but no one goes directly to the sources of which stuff is created. And so in our country, there's three documents that I always refer to. One is the US Constitution, the other is New York State Constitution. And for New York City, New York City is a charter. And a city is a charter because it's not a state. There's no reference to any city in anybody's constitution. C cities are created, cities are basically corporations created by states. And so mm -hmm. as a district leader, that makes me an officer of the Democratic Party, a political party. And, and so my job is to make sure that Democrats have a, and, and my community have a strong voice and connection to the party, and that we're able to uh, elect uh, strong representation from our party to the various public positions. Um, and we are, and, and we, are, because of that, we elect people to the state legislature, to Congress, to the city council, uh, to the executive branches of federal, state, and local, as well as electing uh, judges. So we're probably what you call a political activist. We are an official political activist. So I'm one of the few, in my role as a district leader, I can officially speak on behalf of the Democratic Party. Okay. Other folks who say they're Demo they can't do it. They're not authorized, but I'm authorized to speak on behalf of the party and I'm authorized to create democratic organizations. And I do that in conjunction with Cordell Clear, who's also a democratic uh, district leader. Okay, okay. And we, don't get, and we don't get paid. District <laughs> leaders don't make a dime, Terry Wisdom. Okay. Um, uh, we don't have a budget, so we appear all over the place and invited to here and there. We have to do it on our own Metro card. So, okay, if, I, so uh, I please join up my, my club, Uptown Democratic Club, or join Michelle Obama Democratic Club and pay your dues so we can afford a metro card. <laughs> okay, okay. Yep. So um, you're speaking about the um, Democratic clubs and you said your Democratic club, if you would share what that is, and then Cordell Clear, Yes. Um, her Democratic Club, uh, if you just share what that is, because I, I. Yeah. So my, my the club I created is called the Uptown Democratic Club. I created in 1999 and then I revamped it with um, Yasmin Hurst and Cornelius, who's the Democratic State Committee woman. We revamped it along with Beverly Austin in 2015. Uh, Cordell, mm -hmm. who originally come out as a turn of truth, truth Democratic Club. Uh, and when she became a district leader in the 70th Assembly District, prior to that she was in the 68th, she yeah. created her own club called the Michelle okay. Obama Democratic Club. And the Michelle Obama Democratic Club and the Uptown worked very, very closely together. Okay, okay. So thank you so much um, for sharing that. Now, we Cordell Clear, uh, who is uh, the um, Democratic appointed candidate for state senator, and she is taking uh, the seat or uh, going to, uh, in this November election, uh, the seat of our uh, Lieutenant Governor, uh, Brian Benjamin. So would you just share a little bit about what that is, what's happening, why it's happening, and just a little bit about the election uh, in November and, and, and what that truly means. So um, she's actually the Democratic nominee. Uh, normally to become a nominee of a political party, you win a primary election. Uh, but in this case, uh, she's chosen by the elected Democratic County Committee members of the 30th State Senatorial District. And that's over 700 people. Um, and they're all very active in their, in their neighborhoods, on their blocks. And so this is the most active, vocal, visible people you can ever meet in Harlem 
um, because they're and connect connected to everything. And so she was actually chosen by folks that know her and know her work and, and trust that she's gonna be a strong voice. Now, what's interesting about this state senatorial seat in the 30th district is that she follows a long tradition of, uh, of people being nominated by the county committee since mm -hmm. 1961, when Constable okay. Baker Motley was also uh, elected um, through the same process. The only person that did not go through this process since 1961 was Bill Perkins. When um, David Patterson, who became governor, he, was, he got picked to be Lieutenant Governor. He resigned at the right time that gave uh, Bill Perkins a chance just to run in the community, but that almost went to county committee as well. Uh, David Patterson was also nominated through the county committee process. So as I say, in the last 60 years, the only person that did not go through that was Bill Perkins, but that was because David Patterson left maybe a few weeks before that process was going to start. So Bill Perkins was, was forced to collect signatures um, and, and, and heavily compete. But because he was well known in the community um, as a, a city, former city council person um, and the seat, and the, at that time when Bill was in the city council, the city council district ran over into the Upper West Side. And so it kind of mirrored the state senatorial district that also has a portion of the Upper West Side. So that okay. gave Bill Perkins like a, a really a solid edge uh, to win that seat. And in that same race, Virginia Fields, who had just been Manhattan um, borough president, she also mm -hmm. was running too. Oh, and, wow. she, and she lost to him. You know, okay. and so I, okay. I tend to know all this history stuff in terms right. of who yes, was in and who was out. Yeah, very important. And it's um, a little bit complex. I know that there have been some other media, uh, not Harlem Network News, who have really made reference to uh, our Harlem districts um, as uh, like a musical chairs that's happening you know, where people are in one seat and then they try to run for another. Um, if you could just comment on that for us, but I- really And that's only a few, that's only a few people. Okay. Um, and this I, is I the voice of- I can uh, only think of two people that kind of done that. Okay. Um, but, um, but I don't know if it's musical chairs. So in the case of Inez Dickens, she moved from a city to a state position. And so okay. normally that's, a, you know, the state has higher authority in the city. Okay. Bill Perkins went from the city to the state. And so that's the same thing. So I don't know if that's musical chairs. Okay. I, I would think that they decided to expand their influence. Okay. Um, and so I just want to give credit where it's due. Um, the you. issue of the musical really came about with this last county committee when we found assembly members uh, 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 three of them running for the state senate, mm -hmm. and the state senate and the state assembly is is relatively the same, and, and, and other than maybe the state senate has more geographical location, but I, you know, look like this. The assembly has a lot of power, and the state senate has a lot of power. I don't think the, the Senate is over the assembly. I think they pretty much have shared power. So the question mm -hmm. was, why are people trying to then maybe move to these other seats when they're already in positions that already have state power? So okay. that's, a, that's a question that they got to answer. Okay. And, and the day you have them on to answer that question, I'm going to be one of the listeners. Okay. Because I, I I'm hear curious you. on why would they do that? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Especially I mean, when district leaders yeah. like myself and Cordell I got we've you. Been, we've been waiting to serve in a public elected role. And that's why we became district leaders to be on the ground first and to learn. And like her and me, we've been district leaders for more than a decade. And okay. uh, we feel that being a district leader is the first step. Who knows? Yeah, it's the first step <laughs> okay. to learn. And, and then, yes. you know, you, you spend 10 years in the free position and then you qualify for the other positions. Now you have a lot of folks that was trying to run for public positions that had no other contribution. Mm -hmm. You got people running with slogans and posters and stuff. And then when you check out their resume, it has no connection to Harlem whatsoever. 
Mm. None whatsoever. Okay. You know, we're now mm. even electing a, this recent person got elected um, who nobody knew, but because so many of us was running, we divided the vote and let pretty much someone right. who had not been yeah, engaged, I, I believe, never been um, to a community board meeting. Mm, well. to not, you know, I'm not, and I'm not trying to diss this, this young lady because I know she's smart and I, I have a sense that she really cares. But as a Democrat districtly, I have to really speak up and say, hold it. But people, this is not about slogans and jumping to a seat. You really got to make sure even once you get the nomination, your job is to reach out to people. Now, when Cordell got the nomination, she contacted everybody. Hey, I want to sit down for everybody. Right. This, other yes, person yes, did not, yes. this other person has not even reached out to nobody. She's right. waiting for folks to contact her. Right. I was like, if you're gonna if you're gonna build alliances, even if you have a different perspective, you still need to sit down with people, you know, and see what you have in common and remove with love. That is love is say, so, you know what? I'm now the nominee. Let me now reach out since I'm the winner to see how I can engage other people. And, okay. and I think that, and that's what Cordell has done. Cordell mm -hmm. said, okay, I won the nomination of all these other folks, but let me also call them all up and say, let's sit down and figure out how we can work together. That's what Cordell did. Now the other person, someone needs to interview her and ask her, who does she contact? Cause she certainly didn't contact me or Cordell and, and or other folks. And we would love to sit down with her to plan for Harlem because let me tell you, if Harlem put you in a seat, I'm going to make you work. Right. I don't care Absolutely. if I have a different opinion. You're going to work Absolutely. for me. I'm going to be all in your face and you better have your act together because we're going to come for you, making sure that you do the things that you promised to do and you take care of this community. And that's the bottom line. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for sharing this. Um, Harlem Network News uh, audience, um, I'm Terry Wisdom, I'm your host. You know that Harlem Network News is a new media platform. We've been around for a year and a half and we were created uh, to assure that Harlem and Harlems of the world are informed. I have the honor of um, speaking with um, our district leader here in Harlem, one of our district leaders, um, the honorable and knowledgeable uh, William Allen. He is not uh, able to show himself today, but I just want to assure that you're listening to the voice of William Allen. Um, we were scheduled to have uh, Cordell Clear on today, who is has been appointed most recently uh, to the uh, state Senate candidacy. And I would say the Democratic uh, Terry, candidacy. Terry, yes. yes, sir. I would use the word appointed. Okay. She was elected, elected by the members of the county committee, which is over okay. 700 people, to okay. be the Democratic nominee. That basically means she didn't have to go through the petition process. That the elected see, county committee people are elected Democrats. They are okay. elected Democratic voice, and they have a right to do what they did. It's not, no, because some people out there saying that it was a, a small group of elite and all this other kind of stuff. Anybody can run for county committee. <laughs> In fact, we look forward to people participating and becoming county committee people and then come do the work. Don't wear a title, come do the work. And so she was elected um, uh, by more than 700 people in the county committee. Say, hey, you're our nominee uh, and we're gonna make sure that you're in the special election, general election that's gonna be on November the 2nd. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, so, I mean, all of this is very important um, it, and it's especially um, important now. And I think that um, people, because there's so much going on, I mean, COVID has been a horrific experience and our Harlem community lost more than others and we're still losing more than others. And we have... Um, just had a lot of disparities. I, I, I kind of feel like and inequities. And I feel that uh, COVID really has pulled the scab off the wound. It has made it extremely clear that there are disparities, but I think it has made a lot of people wake up to what's going on and realize that there's a great connection mm -hmm. between what is happening um, to us and how we vote and what we do. And, you know, obviously the, uh, you know, election of the Biden-Harris uh, team 
showed us what we can do. I'm also extremely concerned um, here in New York City because we all know and we have learned how much local elections matter. So it is extremely concerning that in our past primary, only one, um, uh, uh, 28% of all of New York City voted. So this is concerning, especially in a country and with other parts of the country, people are fighting for their um, right to vote and it's being stripped of them like bit by bit. So we've got a war going on. So what is it in a city where people can vote that they're not voting? And I kind of feel like it's kind of a COVID, uh, you know, using COVID in another way, but like, like what's going on? Like, why are the voters so disconnected? Why do they feel their vote doesn't matter? Why are they not exercising their constitutional rights? And why are they not being involved and, and, and informed? Can you speak on well, it? Well, I, I, I can speak on it. First of all, it's the responsible of citizens to make sure they're informed. I learned a long time ago, you trust nobody in power. Don't really trust me, I'm a human being. If, if, if you want to say you're an American and you care about your community, your country, you have the, the moral obligation to be engaged and to keep yourself informed and stop waiting for somebody else to inform you. You gotta, you gotta be hungry for this life that we cherish as Americans. And a lot of times only a few of us are out here doing all the work and everybody else is there. And then when we try to do the work, we get blamed for not doing the work. And I'm saying, I, I now hold all of us responsible for our life here on our blocks, on our avenue and our building. Just like if you have a tenant association, sometimes out of a building of 200 people, three people show up and we got to stop this. We got to hold each other accountable. It's not just a, the politicians who exercise great power is often sometimes they come from communities that's well organized. When Adam Clinton Powell was in office, the community was strong. Everybody was engaged. The churches was filled. We had uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of civic organizations. And now it seems like it's no longer popular to stay engaged. It's almost right. like, oh, if you're engaged, you look like, they, they, oh, my God, you do all that? Oh, wow, that's you. You know, Or I don't have time to go to that meeting. I got to run home and cook dinner. I mean, it's like, it's horrible. And then if you, if you talk to our our sisters and brothers who are immigrants, they said, wow, you guys are so lucky because the country I come from, we will welcome an opportunity to participate and we're not allowed to. Here mm -hmm. in this country, you, you have the opportunity, but you don't participate. And so this is why even in Harlem, we are losing our property. Black folks, uh, the population is dwindling. Thank you, it's, tell it. You know, tell we need to it. you know, tell stop it. blaming other folks and stop blaming yourself. You know, get involved. You got PTA, you got Parent Teachers Association where only a handful of parents show up. Come on, let's stop this, this blame game and hold yourself responsible. Because to me, as an elected politician, I'm only as strong as my community. So if they choose not to be engaged, they weaken my voice on their behalf. Other mm -hmm. politicians, they count vote and they know exactly who's supporting you. And believe me, they, you know, if you come to them and say, hey, I want to do this, they say, well, hold it. How are you going to ask me to do something? Your own community is not doing it. You know, the, our democracy is based on participation. Right. And when there is no participation, we lose. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the rich, and the rich people, the corporations, they don't like saying, oh, let somebody else do it. Look, at, look how much money corporations spend on elections. Look Thank at the Republicans, yeah. the rich folks in Congress. Why are all these rich folks involved? I mean, so apparently it has some value. Mm -hmm. And so we as poor and middle class people don't get involved and don't stay connected. We're like really hurting ourselves. We're hurting ourselves mm -hmm. in a, 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 a real big way. You know, I mean, I sometimes I hear expressions like, oh yeah, I don't like those politicians. Well, guess what? You're a politician too. Everybody's a politician. When you choose to be involved, not involved, you're just as a politician as anybody else. And, and, and it's either gonna help us or it's gonna hurt us, you yeah. know? And, and so to me, that, that's the real deal, um, uh, Terry. I'm just so concerned about how do we increase involvement. So now when I talk to people, I said, listen, I blame you for what's going wrong here. They said, huh, huh, what? I said, yes, I'm blaming you. I've never okay. been like, 
We got someone now elected city council who's never been to a community board meeting. I was like, hold it. How does this, how is that possible? Terry, you serve on a community board. You see how important yeah. it is. Yes, and all I the do. information. You see how these developers are coming to our community. Imagine if we didn't have a community board, Terry, and these right. big wealthy developers come in. We would long been gone from Harlem a long time ago. Mm -hmm. You yes, know, the no. building is I mean, it, it's extremely, building. it's extremely critical. And critical. I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, I'm sorry that uh, Cordell Claire, um, you know, had the emergency and she wasn't able to really come on. And she'll um, be on another she, time. Right. She, she will be. And she is, let me tell you, she is a mm -hmm. fighter. It's a yes, fighter. Let me tell I'm you, I'm, as, a, as a black man, I am so proud of her. You know, I'm so proud of her organic, her naturalist, her, her representation of, of, of our culture. She speaks truth to power. Yes, she does. Uh, she knows the issue. She's extremely mm -hmm. bright. She's extremely dedicated to what's going on. She's willing to listen to everybody. I mean, she and I don't agree on public schools uh, all the time. She and I, I mean, I'm a big proponent of charter schools, as people know. And part of my job is to make sure that she's meeting with every type of school in Harlem so she can learn the value on each side. You know, I said, Cordell, you, I want you to go learn from both sides because nothing's perfect from either mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our children have the best wherever they are. So my task is to make sure you get all the information. Yes, knowledge, all the knowledge is power. Knowledge is and, power. Um, that got, is what got, Harlem got, Network real estate is developers. About. You got um, some good ones, real estate developers. You got some good ones and bad ones. Some are heavily involved in their profit. And some are really there to create housing to build a better mm -hmm. community and city. Mm -hmm. We got to sit down with the ones that just want money, and the ones that want to be in service, we cannot afford to lock, leave out anybody. We have to make sure that we sit down with everybody so they can see what our needs are and our perspective. And then if they can't do what we, you know, we're trying to do as a community, then you deal with them. You know, and so that's what I like about her. She's open to listen and to figure out how do we, how, particularly as people of African descent, how do we preserve our presence in Manhattan? Because if they're moving us out of Harlem, they're moving you out of Manhattan. Right. And to me, this is real gentrification. And guess what? It's not just white folks moving black folks out of, of Harlem and Manhattan. It's black folks aiding and abetting. Mm -hmm. I had a white business owner in Harlem tell me the other day, he said, Will, your own people are pushing you out. He was telling me the price to rent a store was astronomical. He was talking about, it's a white guy, talking about the rent. He said, listen, you need to have a real discussion about economics in the city and economics in Harlem because it, there seems to be some uh, co-conspirators involved in this process. And right. sometimes Got it. Got there are it. folks that share your culture. So don't fall for the okie doke. Mm. And I agree. I said, you know what? You, I said, thank you. I said, sir, thank you so much for telling me that. And I said, I'm going to share that with Cordell and others who are willing to listen to me, saying that this would, we really got to deal with this, this economic issue that's taking place. So it's, it's not what happened at Lenox Terrace and others, but I'm down here in the southern portion of Harlem, and these condos are, are coming up left and right, and none of them are, are going to house middle class and working class people. None of them. There's like there's like no housing built for the working class. Right. Yeah. In this and city. It's and I'm glad. Um, it's I'm horrible. Terry, I'm Terry Wisdom, and I'm just going to interrupt. You're hearing uh, the voice of our district leader, uh, William Allen, and I do want to say that Harlem is indeed a village. Um, Cordell Clear, who was supposed to join us today, had an emergency, but this is a village, so. Her uh, co-district uh, leader, I guess I can call you that, William Allen, uh, has come on to um, really educate and edify us on the process and speak on uh, behalf of Cordell Clear and with Cordell Clear, um, because as uh, you know, Mr. Allen has spoken, like we, Cordell Clear, once uh, she was elected to be the Democratic candidate. Uh, she reached out to the team, to the Democratic team. She has reached out and um, they're working, everybody's working collectively. And in Harlem, that's how it should be. This is how we're going to win, to inform people, to work collectively, 
um, this is absolutely critical. I don't, I'm not going to get off track because I am before this is over, uh, this interview is over because it's imperative that we speak truth to power. Harlem Network is news is a new uh, media platform. And now we've been around uh, a year and a half in this COVID and trust me, I and Harlem Network News team, we are involved in hand-to-hand -hand combat every day, okay? I feel it is our responsibility to make sure that folks are informed, to get out on the street and make them know whether they wanna know or not, call them out. This is Harlem, I live here, and I need everyone to get involved because we have Harlem Network News. There's no excuse to say that you did not know. So we continue. Uh, we do need you to support us. If you can make a donation, that will assist. If you see something happening in the community or in the world, and you know it's a story idea, reach out. Um, if you can write, uh, you know, if you're at an event and you take pictures and videos, send it to us because right now we're looking to staff, but we've really got to. Um, garner the support, but we're working with the army that we got. That's where we are right now. We're boots on the ground and it is critical. We are fighting for our lives between the developers and everything that is occurring. And I will just say that this week, last week, um, Harlem Network News, and it is up on our YouTube as well as um, our Facebook, we had on members of the, um, the uh, Espinard Gardens shareholders. And I mean, they actually had come to the community board of which I am a, a, a member and I am appointed as a community board member. And I've been on that about a year and a half and I'm on the housing committee, but members of the Espinard Gardens complex shareholders came to our community board housing committee begging for us to support and assist them. There are, and, and our community board chair, the Honorable uh, Charles Powell, as well as our uh, vice chair uh, was on, and that is our Honorable Donna Gill and some of the shareholders. And we got down to business to understand what is going on and trust me, Harlem Network News, we were on site as many of the shareholders, they had a meeting with the oversight committee of their board. And I got an understanding completely of what is going on over there and our seniors are being abused and they're doing some capital improvements and it is just outrageous and chaotic and um, it's terrible. So I have actually uh, been able to, um, go out and uh, you know video some of the things that's happening, exactly. talk to the people. And this is the kind of action that we've got to take and that public officials have to take. So, um, uh, so William Allen, did you want to uh, weigh in? Yeah, so yeah, thank what you. I want to say, whether it's Lennox Terrace or Espinar or all these right. other where developers have come in and capital proof and all this stuff, stuff. What's happened, Terry, our community has become a sleeping community. And while we were asleep, we woke up and all of a sudden, all these new elements was present mm -hmm. and we were overwhelmed by it. And it's a lesson in this. Stop sleeping so much. Be responsible, manage your assets. All our ancestors gave us this beautiful community, but, we, it, it, but it, it doesn't mean that we stop working for it. We've been sleeping and because we've been sleeping, other folks have been coming in. So what we had, and began to say, you know what? I can make some money here. Hmm. You know, there's a there's been a lot of property up until the early 1990s. The city owned nearly more than 80% of the real estate. That means the community had a chance to get this property and to develop it and to do something with it. And a lot of us didn't take advantage of it. Hmm. And so you look at 145th Street, to be honest with you, 145th Street is an undeveloped block. Right. And yes. we should have been the one saying, you know what, what we want to do with our land, what we want to do with this. And instead of letting other folks come in and do stuff that's not to our advantage. Right now, Esplanade's biggest challenge is that seawall. 
And if I was them, in order for me to support a development project, I would say, you know what? Let's sit down and talk about a three to five block radius development of our area and how we can all benefit from it. Because Esplanade needs help. They need help, they need help, they need help. And that seawall now is costing them a whole lot of money that they're middle-class people and they cannot afford. Would you explain um, a little bit about the seawall? Because I'm not sure wall, everybody knows what Yeah, so the seawall is connected to the Harlem River. And it wasn't an issue until Hurricane uh, Sandy. And when Hurricane Sandy came in, we said, oh my God, it flooded out their cars. It right. flooded out their mm-hmm. basements. And they never experienced that before. That was like the first major hurricane uh, that we had in the New York City area in like 100 years. Mm-hmm. And so finally, it's, oh my God, you know, the way this, this agreement was made with the state, it put this heavy burden on a poor community to be responsible for a seawall that should be the state's responsibility. Mm-hmm. And so, so now that you have this major development project trying to come in, I would kind of say, listen, guys, we have to really sit down and talk about your part. We have to talk about your part in connection to all Harlem people and supportability. But more importantly, these other things that we need help with, particularly the seawall, that we need to get the state and the city to make a solid financial commitment to fix that seawall. And that seawall should not be just the responsibility of poor people, middle class people. That has to be the responsibility of the city and the state. Um, that same seawall is impacting Riverbend, another um, largely black co-op in Harlem, and mm-hmm. they're going through the same issues. Mm-hmm. You know, um, their, their money, their maintenance money is, is, is tied up. If you know, recently, mm-hmm. uh, Esplanade Gardens uh, maintenance, monthly maintenance went up by 17%. Right. Yeah, it mean, actually, it's, it's, um, just to clarify, because I've been sitting in on their meetings and I have been talking with... Um, you know, many of the shareholders and the seawall, I, I don't know the details in, a, exactly, but what I do know is that they have, um, they have a board and um, they're having to wake up and get their board on track because um, the board has represented them, but the board, and I can speak truth to power, has also misrepresented them. So as you stated, in they're doing capital improvements. And these capital improvements involve fixing up their bathrooms, their lobbies, the this, the that. And they are now being charged, they were initially charged a 27% increase. And it, you know, everybody can do math, knows that's a lot. And it's now a lot. there's a 17% increase coming up. Now the capital improvements that are happening have gone awry. There are senior citizens who, they, first of all, there's no water in the whole complex in the six buildings with the over the thousand families that live there. There's no water from nine to five every day. Half of their um, you know, shareholders are senior citizens and senior senior citizens, people above 60, above 80. So they don't have water. They're filling up their bathtubs and they've done things like take the sink out and leave it out for like three weeks. There are extraordinary floods that are happening uh, because of what's going on. Their terraces and windows are sealed up so they can't breathe. There's been destruction to their property. There are seniors who are having to use a porta potty or something because their toilet's been out for three weeks. So attention must be brought to this. And these are people who have worked hard um, who have contributed to the community and who are paying their rent and the increases while all of this madness is happening. And um, the building, the city, or whoever it is, even if they can't stay in their home due to these conditions, black mold, airborne mold, you name it, um, they're not being compensated for that. They're having to do that. And some of the people that live there don't have the financial means to do it. So I, this is an atrocity. And I feel this is a form of genocide. And I will say it strongly because I have been in the apartments. I got the picture. This is an expose. This is a Rikers Island of, of um, housing. It's a Willowbrook of housing. That's yes. what's going on. 
and attention needs to be called to it. Major media doesn't touch it. And public officials have not really been touching it either. I know I did talk with um, our assembly, state assembly member, Al Taylor, and he has been active with it. He has gone and visited people's apartments. His office is actually in this base of the building one, and yeah. he's been getting floodings. And I know that he spoke. We're free, a uh, free media, so I'm free to speak and say what I have to say. But um, he did talk to HPD. Uh, and, you know, he's going to, he's spoken to the director and he's trying to push and make that happen. There are a couple of uh, meetings that are coming up. There are four board seats up. So they are trying to um, at least get to the point where they have enough votes to make a change, make a difference. The person that is at the head of the board has not really been doing a good and effective job for the shareholders. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, right? Yes. So are the board meetings open to the shareholders? Um, the board meetings have been on Zoom. And but I'm saying, they, are, but are they open to the um, shareholders? I believe that they are. Open, that's the, that's the they, critical part. But they me. can't. They cannot speak. But they yeah. can come, and because of Zoom, there are some things that have happened where they weren't being informed. But right now, they have an oversight committee, and they're really trying to do their diligence. And if we know anything about the history of these Mitchell Lama uh, co-ops, we do know that a Mitchell Lama co-op in Williamsburg, in 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 um, Lindsay Park, they actually had to go in. They had undercover, you know, people that um, targeted the board and several of the board members went to jail. So the question in Lennox Terrace is the, the, the members are calling for a forensic audit because there's lots of money involved and they need to know where the money is and how it's being appropriated and how these contractors are being chosen. And the contractors, um, I think one of them is Laddie, um, the contractors have taken over. So, so his, his, my, his, his point, I, I don't want to get, Terry, I don't want to get too far out. Okay. My point is that the shareholders themselves have to have some kind of oversight vehicle yes. to making sure the board get the resources to be good at what it did. Just like the community board. You, the community yes. board yes. has public, public members, people not appointed, but they are, uh, you can be expected to come observe and decision that made by. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, this is our, okay. Thank you, William Allen. You were uh, breaking up just a little bit. We can hear you now. Our district leader, William Allen. Yes. Open media, the question of entities have neither done with, with under the, what to me, those board I don't and the cap themselves in terms of their ability to be effective ombudsman for the neighbors, right? Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. Shauna Harmon Goff, who's running for state senate, she was she lives there and she was on the board. What did she do? Right, right. Yes. I mean, so she's been going to community board. I'm seeing there's a lot of mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. You're breaking up uh, just a little bit. Um, uh, now, Athena Steve Moyes with the broad president. What did what these people? Mm -hmm. Monty Williams is a public advocate. What is his job as the city's ombudsman to protect? So right. I'm saying, uh, you know, how do we make sure that the right institutions are protecting our most vulnerable population? But right. how do we also make sure that the vulnerable population have a solid, consistent engagement right. in this right. stuff? That's what I tell right. you. Harlem has been sleek waiting for somebody else to do the work. And then we woke up and found that people were stealing from us. And right. that's because we went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And I think, I mean, I think you're, I think you're absolutely correct. But right now, and like I said, I don't want to go too far in it, but yeah. I've got a passion for it. And I, see, I know you, me too. I'm, I I'm see the these senior too. citizens that are outside their home, have had to stay in a hotel for 11 days. Nobody paid for it. And some of them have been there for house. months. This is, this is this is when this I was is working at NAN, I discovered this stuff when I was at NAN. And seeing seniors started coming to me left and right. I said, What is going on on Esplanade? And mm -hmm. they told me 
broken down my apartment. Right, yeah. I said, but how did this happen? I said, what, what, was there a plan? Was there a meeting? Did, was there some kind of preparation? I also asked them, were they engaged? Did they reach out to the Department of Aging that have representation for seniors? Because the Department you. of Aging will give you a voice for a representative right, to protect right, your right, interests. Right, right, right. I said, are you accessing all the right resources mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. protect yourself? So I have referred a lot of them to the A. Philip Randolph Senior Center Thank who you. have advocates, who have senior advocates. I said, listen, this is being paid for by the city. Utilize these people to help you. Don't let Thank them just you. come into your house. So I said, before they come into your house, make sure you contact the April of Randolph Senior Center and make sure they're involved to protect you. And that's what I did. So okay. that's when I went to Sean and I said, well, Sean, you're on the board. Why do you put this, these mechanisms in place to protect the seniors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. I, I said, you gotta, yeah. you gotta also ask the right people these questions. Right. She was on the board. Right. No, I hear and that's you. I know she got off the board. I said, hold yes. it. Why did you get off the board? You could have mm -hmm. been the voice of the seniors. Right. Yeah. So it's a lot going on, but it's a lot know, going a on. Lot so going part on, of the education, so part of the education we got to do, Terry, and what I do is show people what the resources are to protect themselves. Yes. You yes. know, to protect and, themselves. And so I, you know, quality. as I said, as a media person, the my job. And the job of Harlem Network News is to truly bring awareness to the community. A lot of people are not aware of this. And, you know, I don't think it's an accident that they know it's not that are happening here in Harlem are not covered um, by major media unless like, uh, you know, when I'm not minimizing this unless somebody shot That's you know, right. or something like that has happened, then it'll get some attention that raises up. And then it That's drops right. back down. But this Lennox, I'm sorry, this Espinite Garden situation is a time bomb. That it is, is a time bomb. You're and so right. People are sick. There are those have been in the hospital and they are overwhelmed. They're overwrought. This is a yes. big day situation. And as a journalist, as a Harlem resident, as a community board member, I'm not going to rest on this. So period, I don't want to belabor this conversation. So, really wanted so to- what, So what, so let me ask you this, Terry. So what, how can the community board help in this situation? What okay. is, what is this um, engagement? The community board um, is helping by, first of all, uh, every housing meeting that we have, Esplanade uh, people are welcome. We're getting the Good. information. We're um, sharing them. We do feel that there needs to be some government oversight that has to happen, be it the attorney general, the public advocate. It may be a federal situation because their pool um, has been dug up. Uh, it has not been functional for two years. They still pay an abatement for that. The playground, the basketball court, none of that is happening. And also these construction people have all of their pipes and equipment and sheetrock laying right out in the open, in the pool, just with some tarps. They also um, have taken over 13 apartments that are their offices and they have pipes and all kinds of things in there. In the building 101 uh, West 147th Street on the second floor, the whole second floor is taken over by the construction people and they're not paying for this. And also the... Um, the people that are the um, plumbers, uh, the plumbing company, Laddie, uh, they uh, now are the capital improvement, but they're also the repair people. So they can um, capital improve it, breaks it, break, and then break it and then fix it. So this is unconscionable. They are taking parking spaces for free. This is unconscionable. They're taking revenues from the shareholders so this is a travesty and it really needs some oversight. And based on what I've seen over there, I don't know if they can get these apartments together in 10 years. And you got seniors with water in their bathtub so that they can flush the toilet during the day. This is, this is and there's paper and dust and everything all around and people riding up and down um, on the terraces. And there also have been um, some thefts of the seniors they're being taken advantage of. This is, this is not good. So I'm just saying we got to wake up. We got to stand up because this is war. 
people are dying. This is another way of gentrification and getting people out of here, get them sick, get them abused and let them die on out. That's right. So that's this right. Is, that's this right. Is truly unacceptable. And I'm not going to be quiet on this. I can't. And now that I have reached out, these people continue, you know, to call and reach out and they can continue to reach out to Harlem Network News at, at Harlem Network News at, uh, uh, you know, gmail.com. They can also call me directly at 646-261-5397. And I also um, see that you have your information as a district leader here in the chat. Um, William, uh, William.allen.nyc at gmail.com. And also they can reach out to you uh, via telephone at 917 uh, 612 2871. So they got me, Terry. Whatever, whatever you think, Terry, I'm, I, want, I want to be there to help. Okay. Yeah. I, I just think I want, we can't I want to help and protect talk about people. things and not yeah. talk about um, what is really, really going on. That's so, right. getting back, we're going to wind down. And I thank you so much for stepping in uh, for our um, Cordell Clear, our candidate uh, for state senate. And when is the election happening? Uh, what so early voting, happen? early voting is from October 23rd to October 31st. And then um, the regular uh, general election day is November 2nd. Okay, so folks, um, you, they, they, the early voting starts. Um, can, what's the date of the early voting? Can you repeat that, please? Uh, William Allen? I think, okay. I'm here, can you hear me? Okay, yes, if yes. you would repeat the early voting and- Early uh, voting is from, it's a, it starts the 23rd of this month, it ends on the 31st, and then the regular election day is November the 2nd. Okay, November 2nd. Now, can folks, folks to, uh, is Cordell, uh, she is the Democratic uh, candidate. She's the Democratic state. nominee on the ballot. Nominee. Okay, for state Senate. Um, Senate. Who is anybody challenging her? Is there another anybody else running? Yeah, well, there's uh, a Republican. There, there's there's a Republican running. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, independent candidates running on different party names. Okay. I think there's about three other people running for the seat. Okay. Okay. Thank you. For who they are? I, I don't know. Okay. Okay. So we need to really get the word out. Um, that uh, Cordell Clear is on the ballot that she, and, and get a list of what she represents, how she's gonna help us. A lot of people yeah. do know Cordell Clear because she has been boots on the ground. Um, and she's willing to talk to them. Yeah, and she's willing, uh, she's willing yeah. to talk to people. You know, as you said, she's been a district leader for uh, over 10 years. She and also, she's been chief of staff for a city council member. She's right. been chief of yes. staff for a state Bill senator. Yes. She was yes. president of District 3 School Board. Yes. She's been also chairman of Council of Educa uh, Community Education Council. Yeah. She she helped to pass the city's lead poisoning um, law for children. This woman has, like, done it. Yes, this, absolutely. I mean, she has the resume mm -hmm. and the time end. Yes, and, and she doesn't let- And she's not running on slogans and no, posters no, and flyers. No. And she, does she has not, a body of work. She, yeah, and she doesn't let anything stop her. No. Um, we, I just look at her and I'm like, okay, because within this past month, she lost her youngest son to COVID. That's right, Jordan. And she kept going. She kept going. She continued and she was able to, you know, win this- um, Nom nomination you know she, she 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 and she dedicated she said this is for my son he believed in me this is what he wanted me to do and as strong people of color that that's what we can do because um we can't afford to be in the gap no matter what happens to us that's so right. i salute um cordell clear for that now can you just give some clarity because i need the clarity for myself as well um okay so let's say Cordell Clear wins the election uh, in November, November 2nd. Uh, and when does she officially become the state senator and start going up there and voting and doing the things? The next day, uh, the next the day. The next day. Okay. Now, 
please. That, yeah, that's the, and if it's, but let me explain why. Okay, yeah, so that, that's what she, I want to know. Thank she's you. running in a, so when you, when you run in a special election, you take the seat the next day after the election. Okay, got it. Okay. So that was my clarity because I, I was concerned. And like I said, I, I'm one of, a student of you, William Allen, because I know you teach this. And I'm doing everything I can. Uh, this is Harlem Network News and I'm Terry Wisdom to research what I'm talking about, to talk to people, to seek that knowledge, and then to impart it to as many of our uh, citizens and community as I can so that we can all uh, stand together. So you've answered one of my questions because I was like, okay, she's you know being elected and normally like somebody doesn't take office till like January. So I was like, well, what's gonna happen in our community? Like who's gonna vote for us in Albany? Who's gonna deal with our issues while we waiting and we don't have a state Senator because um, you know, Brian Benjamin has now been appointed as a Lieutenant Governor. So thank you for clarifying that. So the very next day, Cordell is going to be the state senator and she's going to be able to vote and get in there and do what has to be done, correct? That's right. Okay, now, what are some of the things that are pending, just briefly, and we're going to wrap it up, but what are some of the things that are pending on the state senator's side that Cordell is going to have to jump right into? Uh, criminal justice reform and affordable housing. Okay. So she got to immediately jump on the criminal justice issues, um, many of the things that Brian Benjamin had brought to the table. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, deal with the COVID uh, pandemic. Yes, and, yes, And yes. that fully address the affordability of rent, not only for residential, but for commercial as well. Okay, got it, got it. Okay, and I think um, we, we, you know, we have so much on our shoulders we cannot forget that COVID still lives. You know, we're living and we have adopted ourselves because we're adoptable to COVID. We're wearing our mask, uh, getting our test. Um, some of us are getting our vaccine and some are choosing not to. And that is um, for, for their reasons, be it health and, you know, other things. So we have a lot going on. But even with this Espinar Garden situation, COVID is alive and well, and senior citizens do not have running water and can't flush their toilets from nine to five every day. And this has been for months and they're having um, floods and having mold and you know they're seniors so they can't like maybe pull up their own carpet by themselves and some can't afford to do that. So, and there are children who are living in there who have gone through COVID and are like back to school and can be quarantined or not. And now they're having to live with not having the basic uh, public services. So this is Espinar Garden, which is one of our like middle class uh, places as a condo. So look at that. And then we look a little further and we look to NYCHA, what are we talking about? What's really, what's re as, the, as the young people say, what's really good? What's good? So, um, you know, we got a lot to deal with. Now, you shared uh, that, um, and this is our district leader, William Allen, you shared that- um, Who's your now, new political commentator? Huh? <laughs> I said, I'm gonna be your new political commentator. Okay, you can work it, you work want. it. Six to explain any of these things. It's just like the major networks have these political commentators that oh, kind yeah. of explain things. So oh, yes. Terry, I'm willing to come on anytime you need. Thank you. Explain. I'll be your resource. I would love to do that for you. I, I love you for that. And that's why I love um, It Takes a Village. That's what we're really about. And this is how we'll be change, you know, about change. And I'm a kind of person, I ask questions if I don't know I'm going to find out and I'm going to keep coming until I do find out and I'm going to keep pushing until there is some change. That is what um, Harlem Network is about. This is why we created it, um, really to just bring about change and care and, and respect um, in our community. Now, going further, so Cordell elected... Um, you know, the day after she's elected, she's going to be on it and do everything, uh, you know, that 
as 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 a state senator because as you mentioned um it's a special election but what happens in june because i understand that in june now she's got to face a primary and another election um, in November if she wins the primary for the Democratic Party. And then how long would she be in office as a state senator if she wins this primary and this election? Please advise. She's Jennifer. not running in a primary right now. This is a- this No, no, is no. I'm saying after this special election in November, I'm getting a little ahead but I okay. want everybody to know. So, this, um, so this, the primary change. election next June is for all is all the state seats. Okay. Next next okay. next year is governor, all the state senators, all the members of the state assembly, they're all up for re-election. And so okay. the state senate, the state senate of New York, uh, while it it, it it some of its powers merit the, the federal government of the of the U.S. Senate, but it really does not. The state Senate only serves for two years. They got to run for re-election every two years, mm -hmm. right? So um, so when she wins on um, the second, she has she, she's always going to be up for re-election because it's a short term. It's only two years. So right. she always right. got to be ready. But here's what mm -hmm. I, I learned about Cordell, right? Cordell is the kind of person who won't be doing the work because she's uh, worried about when it's the next election. I think she's going to do the work and it's going to speak for itself. Okay. Because if you have to constantly worry about getting reelected, then you're really not going to be doing the work of the people. Absolutely. And, and I think Cordell's focus is to go in and to do the work and let the work speak for itself. She's going to have to make sure that people know what she's doing, but mm -hmm. it's not so much just because she wants to be reelected. She wants to know that the things that we know need to be done, someone is getting them done. Okay. And that's gonna and that's gonna be the big difference. And okay. so yes, so her next election will be a primary for the Democratic nomination next June. And this time around, she won't get the uh, she won't be going through a county committee process. She I has see. to go through the petitioning process. I see. And this is why her reaching out to all the other elected officials and district leaders and county committee people, she's gonna have over the next couple of months keep those people informed and keep them together, Create, promote unity. And because mm -hmm. of that unity, when she's now running for re-election, she'll have the five members of the assembly and the X number of district leaders supporting her. And so they'll be running as a stronger team. Okay, okay, thank you for that. And I thank all of the people that are watching and listening. I'm getting some great comments uh, in the chat. Uh, where uh, you know people are just really um, pushing out. Uh, Nikki, uh, you know, says uh, that absentee ballots have already um, uh, arrived. We've got Stephanie who says Harlem sold out years ago, and Nikki is saying uh, that uh, the twenty eight percent that voted in the primaries that was a record high. And then we have uh, Nye Whitaker of the Educated Voter speaking, and you can get on her site and really get educated about your voting. So I'm just- um, Nye you know. Whitaker is incredible. She's yes. a strong yes. activist. That's somebody who I turn to for a lot of guys. And you also mentioned mm -hmm. Nikki. Which yeah. Nikki was that? Nikki Yearwood? Uh, uh, let's see. Let me just um, scroll down. Um, Nikki and I just see W H Y, so I'm not sure. Bit, w H. If that's Nikki Yearwood, that's another great, great person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, who made sure that Harlem was counted through the the census. And and then you you mentioned Nye Whitaker. These are two extraordinary African American women that understand the price that we have to pay to stay well informed. Mm -hmm. And Nikki is right. You know, we did have a size amount of people that participate in the primary but it's still not significant enough because in the 1950s, when people went vote for mayor, nearly 100% voted. And okay. with every, every every four years, that number has dwindled down now to below right. 30%. Yes. That's not yes. good enough. A democracy mm -hmm. needs participation. Mm -hmm. Whether you got bad politics or not, you should right. go out and vote and find a candidate that you can believe in, but you mm -hmm. got to participate with your vote and with your voice. Yes, yes. Let's let's get this done. I let's think we're onto something, and we're here with uh, District Leader William uh, 
Alan, who has uh, become our uh, political uh, consult and will just uh, get all that information to us so that we are informed. And, you know, we've got Nye Whitaker with the Educated Voter. So um, we're at the beginning of it. And trust me, the seniors that are, uh, and all of those that are in uh, Esplanade Gardens are standing up, fighting back. Be, they, they're, they're woke, as the young people say, and they're gonna stay woke because it's required and they know that um, their life depends upon it. And we're also going to um, hold Mayor de Blasio and, and the new mayor coming in, uh, you know, potentially our Eric Adams, feet to the fire. Like people got to deliver. This kind of stuff cannot go on in New York City. And it's if it's happening in Espinar Gardens, it's happening all over Harlem. And so goes Harlem, so goes the world. You know, so we just have to be mindful of that. We've got to, you know, we've got these people that have come in and been elected and they've got to serve the people. You know, it, it just has to happen, you know, and especially in the world and environment that we're living in, our eyes have to be open. Nobody has to hold our eyelids open now. We can see and we can see clearly. So thank you. And William Allen, would you just like to give any quote? And, and also um, I can mention that the uh, person who uh, won the um, Democratic uh, City uh, Council uh, for our uh, district, uh, District 9 is Kristen Jordan Richardson. And we are going to do the deep search, the deep drive, because you got to come and talk to us, Kristen. You got to come. You got to come forth. And if you don't come to us, we're coming to you, okay? Because it's just too critical. There's too much money that Harlem has lost and we're not gonna allow that to happen. Accountability, accountability, accountability. I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News and we're not playing. So um, uh, would you, uh, district leader and, you know, if, uh, would you just share some closing uh, statement and words with us? And Terry, thank you. Yes, I just sir. want to thank you so much. You and I have talked about the importance of the Black press and that I've been really concerned about its absence. It, it, it's, it's really, we got to do all that we can to make sure that this fourth estate becomes stronger again. I tell you, my mom, who's 86 and her generation, used to read the Amsterdam News and Jet Ebony every week. Yes. And now you talk to that generation, they don't have access to that anymore. So mm -hmm. we need to begin to talk about how do we make sure that the media to help us get out information, it becomes strong again. Because if you guys are thoroughly strong, we wouldn't have anybody stepping into these seats not prepared mm -hmm. and that nobody know who they are. Right. Okay. You know, well, so, thank you. so and, you're very, uh, very important. And I'm here to support you. You okay, know, and thank you. you. I think, I think I'm just so glad we have a Terry wisdom. <laughs> thank you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, I'm so glad to be here and I'm so very glad uh, to serve. I think it's critical. Um, I have the passion and uh, praise God. I have the strength and um, the insight into what has to happen. You know, as we train all our lives, I've been a, a, a media person at all the major networks for over 27 years, feature films, all of those kinds of things, uh, entrepreneur, parent, you know, grandparent here in the Harlem community. And I believe that it has all brought me to this point and that this is my calling. So, you know, we're going to gather some funding, we're going to gather some resources, and we're going to continue because it's extremely, extremely, extremely uh, critical. So a few uh, closing words about Port El Clear and what's needed and how folks can help and how they can get involved. Thank you. District leader. Okay. okay. Can you hear me? Uh, okay, yeah, you, you went out for a second. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so Cordell is, is, is open um, to meet with anybody. Please reach out to her. Reach out to me if you need to reach her through me. I'll be more than happy to do that. I've been able to play a major role in her, her campaign so far. 
certainly getting her the nomination by the county committee, you know, was very helpful with that. And, and I just want to, again, thank Al Taylor for that and Keith Lilly and Yasmeen Hurst and Cornelius for their efforts and Valerie Joe Bradley and so many others that said enough already, let's save Harlem. And so Cordell is ready to make sure that the things that we greatly think about is now happening. She's not going to come give political speeches. She's going to come talk about what is the plan to get things done. And she's already got her sleeves rolled up. So please give the sister your support and your concerns, but come work with her. Just don't let her do okay. all the work. You got to work with her and support her so that the work can be done. And at the end of the day, if we lose a win, we can all take credit. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for that. And um, I know uh, this is Terry Wisdom. This is Harlem Network News. And um, it's a great day in Harlem as every day. And we are standing uh, firm. We are staying woke. And I know that Cordell Clear's uh, office, um, uh, campaign office is right there on um, Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard, uh, right there uh, off of like 134th next to um, one of our great uh, black owned uh, beer gardens, Harlem Hops. So it's street level. So you should be able to go right out there. And I just want to just Let's, let's, let's deal with it all as we have a lot of crime and all kinds of things that are happening. So uh, let's stay informed and let's bring this media, this black media back so we know what's happening. This is Harlem Network News coming to you live. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube. Um, we're there. Okay, we need your support. Um, it takes a village. So, and still we rise. And I'm Terry Wisdom. Have a great afternoon. And thank you, District uh, Leader William Allen for stepping on in, that's what you do. And we appreciate you. And uh, we will make you official as our uh, political uh, consultant. So thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day, all. <laughs>